Voici la deuxième édition du Grand Festival culturel du Sud-Ouest. À Bouéa, la ville à l'hospitalité légendaire du 9 au 16 décembre 2017. Au programme, au programme. des parades culturelles, la grande marche sportive prestigieuse avec des parrains et grandes icônes camerounaises. L'exposition des œuvres d'art, peinture, sculpture, photographie, les œuvres littéraires sur les cultures du Sud-Ouest, sud des contes, jeux, luttes et danses traditionnelles, la gastronomie, la médecine traditionnelle, des projections cinématographiques, la musique la en musique live, l'introduction de la course de pirogue féminine et beaucoup d'autres activités seront au rendez-vous du 9 au 16 décembre 2017. Boya, à ton tour de briller. Tour de briller. STV, votre télé. Monday, December 4, 2017, uh, you're welcome to the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Coming up in this newscast, uh, the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front Party, Nijon Fundi, has rubbish President Paul Bia's uh, war declaration against peace detractors in the Northwest and Southwest region. To Nijon Fundi, President Paul Bia's reaction is too late. Over to the political capital, Yaoundé, workers of the Intra-Urban Transport Company are protesting against abusive dismissal and non-payment of their dues. Good afternoon once more and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. And we can start by the way in the Northwest region where the national chairman of the Social Democratic Front Party, Nijon Fundi, has rubbished President Paul Bia's open war declaration against peace detractors. He also congratulated the SDF parliamentarians for their demonstrations during the November session of Parliament. He was speaking in an exclusive interview to our Northwest correspondents Bettin Gray and Ignatius Amabo. Following the demonstrations by LDA members of Parliament of the Upper and Lower Houses of the National Assembly, the chairman of the LDA party, after visiting and spending some days with them in Yaoundé, is back in the region and had this to say as regards the demonstrations. Uh, we are very proud and happy with the activities of our parliamentarians in Parliament and uh, we had this call from people who let their parliamentarians uh, resign. I told them that they should take this trouble on the floor of parliament because that's where they make the laws. And the parliamentarians did precisely that, um, and I'm very happy with that. As to the declaration by President Paul Bia to do all to ensure that peace reigns in the country, the chairman had this to say. Well, he's coming saying that a little too late because all this thing started, he went out stayed out for a long time, and Kim never addressed. Why is it that he's only saying it when he's returning from Ivory Coast when he went for the Francophonie where he met the French president? Is it the French president that told him that when you go home, you must do something that is doing it? Well, he might be saying something right, but a little too late. And uh, I do hope that he's not saying it, just saying, but he will go into in-depth or into details to truly look into the anglophone issue because it is an issue that he knows very well. He however proposes solution to the crisis in the region that has gone for over a year now. Let Mr. Bia grant unconditional amnesty for the teachers on the run, the lawyers on the run to come back. Let him bring all the Cameroonian, the North and Southwest refugees that are there in Nigeria back home. Let us reconcile ourselves. Meanwhile, the population hopes to live in this much preached peace, given the fact that they are getting into a festive period. President Paul Bia's open war declaration against peace detractors and the demonstration by SDF parliamentarians at the National Assembly are some of the issues that animated online media last week. Our reporter Veronica Aji brings us back to this happening last week. Thursday, November 30th, Cameroon's President Paul Bia, upon arrival in the country, 
expresses dissatisfaction over the turnout of events in the southwest region of Cameroon. <laughs> Que la paix et la sécurité soient sauvegardées sur toute l'étendue du territoire national. Shortly after, his declaration goes viral on the online media, debated upon by almost all. Opinions differ, some applauding the head of state initiative, others castigating. The last week of the month of November was rather agitated and animated. Earlier, it was the Social Democratic Front Party that took the center stage with parliamentarians who stopped Prime Minister Philemon Yang from addressing the parliament. <laughs> they demanded the Anglophone crisis be put on the table. A move ridiculed by the government as the November session of Parliament pushed through like nothing ever happened. Few days after, it was the Minister of Transport who decided to reduce the three-month ban on the travel agency General Express Voyage to one. This ministerial decision took many unawares, looking at the road and the festive period. Nonetheless, the travel agency is back on the road with many promises. Like mentioned earlier in the headlines, workers of the Interurban Transport Company in Yaoundé have been uh, striking since uh, this Monday. In the, since this Monday, that is since in the morning, they are decrying abusive dismissal and non-payment of their salaries for over four months. We shall be having details of uh, that story in our subsequent editions of the news. Education in this newscast, uh, the over 3,500 new students who have registered this year at the University of Bamenda have officially signed their names on the school uh, register. This was during the matriculation ceremony over the weekend, a ceremony chaired by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Bamenda in the presence of administrative and religious authorities and also economic operators. Petingui has the details. The achievers, as Professor Teresia Nko Akenji, Vice Chancellor of the University of Bamenda, named this seventh batch of students matriculated in the University of Bamenda, she congratulates their efforts of braving the unhealthy socio political climate in the region to study at the University of the Future. The over 3,500 freshmen and women admitted in the six faculties and six schools of the university this year were advised to explore the opportunities placed at their dispositions in realizing their goals. As declared by the Vice Chancellor of the University, the Higher National Polytechnic Institute recently created by the Head of State will go functional by January 2018. But what impact will it create? Very great. We know that uh, that is, uh, we're going to be training uh, our young friends to graduate with uh, the Bachelor of Engineering and the future Master's and PhD. And it's going to open up a lot of room for his ability. And I think that's the key issue. Dr. Boni Dashako. A young and dynamic entrepreneur recently ranked nine among the top 100 young entrepreneurs in Africa who are less than 40 years old has this offer for the university students. Uh, make them to have uh, internships, give them jobs after the best students, give them jobs to, 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 to a company, and also create um, communication is very important. We, we're doing, we're going to create a uh, Campus, uh, radio. Going by the representative of the Students Association at the university. So I recommend all students just to be in the matriculation ceremony. I think first to be in the right place at the right time with the right people doing the right thing. This year, students are expected to pay a caution fee of 10,000 francs each refundable, aimed at scaring them from destroying university property. <laughs> In our health page this afternoon, we take you to discover the health benefits of um, beta cola. Beta cola, according to medics, possess uh, health, enormous health benefits that keep the body healthy and also essential vitamins 
for the health of the human being. John Paul Sama, tell us more. Garcinia Cola, popularly known as Bitter Cola, doesn't only provide jobs to those who market it, but also has enormous health benefits. This nut, which is mostly found in Western Central Africa, has the tendency of improving liver functions. According to a series of experiments in the 2008 Internet Journal of Pulmonary Medicines, Bitter Cola is said to be able to strengthen fibers in the lung tissue. One major health benefit which Bitter Cola is widely known for is its ability to improve the sexual health of men. It is said that the frequent taking of this knot helps boost the man's performance in bed as well as it is also an effective remedy for erectile dysfunction. And this is done through the increase of blood flow to the genital area. Garcinia cola has also been tested and proven to be able to reduce eye pressure which leads to glaucoma. This, according to researchers at Lagos University of Teaching Hospital in Nigeria, tested the effectiveness of eye drops that contain 0.5% extract of this nut. The results published in 2010 showed that the ophthalmolic solution that is contained in Garcinia significantly reduces eye pressure when used twice a day. This plant product, which is rich in sodium and potassium, in the 2008 issue of the journal Orthopediatric Surgery and Research reveals that Garcinia cola reduces joint inflammation and pain caused by osteoarthritis, a common form of arthritis normally caused by aging, obesity, or a joint injury. Furthermore, chewing bitter cola could also be useful in weight loss and effective in body weight management. Bitter cola further helps in detoxifying the system and could be a possible remedy for food poisoning and also helps with diarrhea. With all these important health benefits of Garcinia cola, also known as bitter cola, it may pose certain effects to the body, especially to those who have allergies and quick consultation in such cases is recommended. Even though it may leave a bitter taste in the mouth when eaten, the sensation of its high value on the body makes this color highly sought after. Let's now get news out of the country with the viewing. Here at the Maylaw refugee camp, it might seem to be an unlikely spot to travel to for food and education. But for more than 30 years, ethnic Korean families have been doing exactly that, as a long-standing civil war has left many seeking help on the Thai-Myanmar border. Now, as camp aid donors redirect funds to central Myanmar, things like rice supplies and qualified teachers have been reduced as budgets are slashed. The students come from different refugee camps and come to study in Mela school for higher education. After the funding was reduced, it affected our school. We urgently need support for rice rations and school supplies. We are struggling to survive. Students and teachers are trying to find a solution. Rations to feed 90,000 refugees in nine camps have shrunk since the 2010 election that saw a quasi-civilian government bring the appearance of democracy to Myanmar. It is illegal for refugees traveling outside the camps to earn extra income, and many are worried that promised jobs and homes in Myanmar will not exist. We need to make sure the group that takes responsibility for the repatriation program will fully support and help the refugees, treating them as equal citizens. They must keep their word. As repatriation plans continue, the border consortium, which provides most of the camp aid, is looking for solutions to fill the gaps for the most needy. In the short term, it's more about looking for flexibility from donors uh, in how their funds will be used and that they're willing to work not only with the government of Myanmar but also with the ethnic armed groups in terms of facilitating that return and supporting the reintegration uh, with communities that are emerging from conflict as well. As international development continues in government-controlled areas of Myanmar, those in the ethnic border areas hope that they won't be forgotten in the rush to do business. Steve Sanford reporting for VOA News from Maysot, Thailand.
us on Sport football in this newscast. The quarterfinals of the mini interpools have been played in Bamenda that was over the weekend. Legendary Kumbu strikes were knocked out of the race for the interpool by Hilltop strikes 0 to 1. Bathman United and Rainbow FC ended after regulation time on a one or parity, but Bafna United uh, held their nerves to beat Rainbow FC 6 to 5 on penalty. Funchal Street FC urged Grandstand FC of Gwen by two goals to one. Meanwhile, Dubwise FC lost to Bafoot Rangers on a scale line of one goal to two. The semi finals will be disputed amongst Bafman United, Funchal Street FC, Hilltop Strikes, and Bafoot Rangers. Let's now listen to one of the players of a heel top strike strikes following their victory. Uh, it's something you will be very, very hard for. Like victory, victory is supposed to be prepared. You know, before the start of the match, you have to respect your opponent. But I think for small football does not play with size. Football plays in the pitch. Like you respect our opponent from the beginning to the end of the game. And that brings us to the end of this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Join Orian Duncan at exactly 7 p.m. for the news in the French language and Veronica Aji at 8 p.m. for the news in the English language. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching and stay in the company of programs on STV. STV, votre télé.